part five of our conversation with the great Qasem Sultan. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. He was a longtime member of Utopia with Todd Rundgren, also a longtime collaborator with Todd as a solo artist. Played with Joan Jett, The New Cars, Meatloaf, Blue Oyster Cult, Scandal, Hollow Notes, and a lot more. Here's Qasem Sultan. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to tell us a story about, so you're backstage and you look up and there's Todd talking to two people, Paul and Linda, then you know what you have to do at that point. Yeah, I, I mean, I had, you know, I, had, yeah, I had met one Beatle prior to that. Um, Who? I, I, I met John. Um, I, I, just happenstance. I was going to an audition with Peter Brown, um, who was then the president of RSO Records. And uh, I, I'd somehow gotten into uh, uh, playing him some demo tapes. Uh, um, and I, I, I was on 72nd Street walking to this, uh, to this meeting. And, uh, and I just saw two people window shopping and they looked vaguely familiar, and um, it was John and Yoko. Uh, I passed by, and I said, oh, I have to go, I have to turn around. And so I turn around, I go back, and I just said, excuse me, uh, um, I beg your pardon, but I just wanted to say that I'm a huge fan, and I really, I, I really think you're great. And I shook his hand, and that was it. I didn't push it any further than that. I, I, I wanted to respect his space, um, and, uh, he was very kind. Had I known at that time that Peter Brown was the gentleman who brought Brian Epstein to the Cavern Club um, it, it, to see the Beatles in 61 or something like that. Or, yeah, I guess it was 61 or 62. Um, I might have said, by the way, I'm, I'm on my way to see Peter Brown. I'll tell him you said hi. And maybe I would have struck up a conversation with him. But uh, it doesn't matter. I, I, I shook his hand and he was very gracious. Um, years later, I'm at Nebworth in London and I see Todd, we're backstage, the Rolling Stones were playing, we were playing with the Rolling Stones and, um, we had already been, uh, we had already done our set. It was one o'clock in the afternoon. It's ridiculously hot, middle of August. And, um, and I see Paul, uh, I, I see a Todd Rundgren in the, in the big catering tent and he's sitting with Paul and Linda. And I, I, you know, I have to be introduced. Um, and I, 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 you know, I'm not a pushy person. I'm really, really not. And, uh, but at that particular moment, I really, I just wanted to shake his hand and say hi. And so I went over to Todd and I whispered in his ear. I said, if you don't introduce me to Paul and Linda right now, I'm going home. Um, so, and we still had other gigs to do. So he said, Paul, this is Cass, I'm on bass player. And it's like, oh, hi, please me. I sat down, Todd split, and I sat down and I spent about 20 minutes talking to him and Linda and they could not have been sweeter and nicer and just lovely, lovely people. And you had said that one of your friends ran into him and he yeah. mentioned you, just can yeah. you share that? That's amazing, he'd remember. Sure, well, Roger, uh, Roger Powell was, um, was playing with David Bowie at the time. He was, he was on tour with David Bowie uh, during a break in Utopia. And he was on the Concord, took the Concord over uh, or, or back from England. Uh, and, um, and Paul was on the flight. And uh, he said hello to Paul. And Paul said, oh, by the way, do you still have that lovely young man who's your bass player? And uh, Roger said, yeah. He says, please tell him I said hi. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty good. Are you surprised that Todd not, not, was not interested in going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I wasn't surprised when I heard it because I'd heard what he'd said about it. But No. And, and when, when Mellencamp got on there, not Mellencamp. Uh, uh, um, Paul and Oates? Uh, no, it was, uh, what was from, uh, Steve Miller. Oh. You know, and I'm going, people are so scared of these institutions, right? They're, oh, I might not ever get in. And. Um, I forget who the artist was who was saying bad things about them in the following year he got in. It wasn't Todd, it was somebody else. Um, people are just scared of these huge monolithic, what seems like institutions. And they, they, but then you'll get an artist who will speak their mind and say, well, yeah, you know, that's not my thing. Uh -huh. um, 
you know, I think Todd's attitude is uh, is like we spoke about earlier in the phone uh, in the in the interview, which is I don't do this to make you happy. Um, if you get happiness from what I do, then that's great. Then that, that's wonderful. But I do it to make myself happy. And in doing that, I hope that other people enjoy it as well. Um, the thing, the whole thing about uh, the Rock Hall is, uh, it, you know, and I, I, I I'll, I'll say it. Um, it's always nice to be recognized by your peers and acknowledged. Um, but I don't think that Todd relies on that to complete himself. If you want to hear the entire interview via podcast or video, the links are in the description of this video. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Music